Welcome to the Brand Sand Woodwind Shop. In the last video, I got the two serious dents out of the slide tubes, one in the inner and one on the outer slide tube. And just from looking at it, it does not look like there's a dent there anymore. It looks like I got the dents out, but there is still a significant bend in these slides. There's a good chance straightening is going to cause more dents. Possibly it's going to kink the metal on the other side where the dent was not. So I'm going to try to be careful and not do that. But these dents were very severe, so I'm not sure what is going to happen. I will find out in a few minutes, though. Also, in the last video, a lot of people left comments. Many people wondered if it's worth the money doing this job. And the answer is, maybe I will find out. I got this trombone for free. So it did not cost me anything to get the trombone. Somebody just did not want the trombone anymore and they just wanted to get rid of it and they gave it to me. If they would have wanted money for it, I probably would have offered about $50 in the condition it was in. Now this trombone in good condition would probably be worth, I'm going to guess around $600 to $700. So the question is, would it cost me $600 to $700 to repair this instrument? I do not know the answer to that yet. So far, I probably have about six hours into this instrument, and by the time it's done, I do not know how long it's going to take, and I do not know if I'm even going to be able to fix these dents in the slide or not. I'm pretty sure that I can make the slide work, at least go back and forth. The question is, how well will it work? This is a different trombone slide, and I'm holding it level right now. I like the slides to slide out at around, oh, this much of an angle. If it starts to slide out at this much of an angle, I'm happy with it. It doesn't always, though. Sometimes it takes a little more of an angle. This one's not moving, though. Let's see. I tap it. Uh, okay. This one slides out about this much of an angle, which is not too bad. I like them better than this. The question is for this slide, when I'm done with it, at what angle will it slide out? Will I need to hold it straight up and down and then shake it for it to come out? If that's the case, then I guess I failed and it probably was not worth fixing the instrument. But if it comes out, you know, at that much of an angle, I will consider that somewhat successful and at least the instrument will be playable. But if you need to start holding it at that much of an angle for it to come out, that will not be good. Do I think it's going to slide out at this much of an angle? Probably not. It's probably going to be more like this. Anyway, I do not know the answer to that question, but I hope to find out within the next few weeks. There's also a lot of discussion about the way that I got the dents out. Some people thought it took way too long to do this, and I probably tapped on the instrument probably several thousand times in the course of maybe two hours. Some people thought that it could have been done a lot quicker, and maybe it could have been. I do not know. I have been repairing instruments for about 27 years, and I have seen a lot of stuff, but there's always more that I have not seen, and there are always things that I do not know. So if somebody has a better way of doing something, I'm always open to listening to that. And from reading the discussion, it got me to think about a tool that might work. I just thought about how to make this tool maybe about a half an hour ago, so I have not made it yet. So I'm going to try to make it for the next video. But for this video, if I can just get these slides straightened out so that they're a little better than they are now, I will be happy. What I mean by straightening the slide out is there is a bend. The dent was right here. You cannot see the dent or the bend right now from just looking at the video, but in a little while I will show you so that you can see it. But there is a significant bend that's still here after getting the dent out at least most of the way. What I'm going to try to do is straighten the slide at the bend. I have to be careful because what's going to tend to happen is the bend is going to try to stay where it is. When I straighten it, it's going to tend to make two curves on the slide, one here and one here. Here's what the slide looks like now. I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit for the drawing so that you can see better. There is a bend and it's a pretty significant bend right there. If I were to just take the slide and then just try to straighten it out, this is what would happen. It would look like this. And again, this is, a, this is quite exaggerated, but this is about what would happen. If this does happen, I need to straighten out each of the slides again, and then the bend would still be there, and then I'd have to straighten the bend out again. So instead, what I need to do is straighten out this bend. So it looks like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a mandrel in this side of the bend 
so that it looks like that. And then I'm going to put a mandrel in on the other side too, like that. And then I am going to bend the mandrels so that it bends only around where the bend is and it does not bend elsewhere on the slide. Here's the bent slide and the dent is right there. You cannot see it in the video, but I'm going to show you what it looks like. And I'm going to use this tool right here to do that. What this is, it's a piece of granite and it's very flat and it has something on the bottom so you can hold it in the vise. So I'm going to put it in my little bench vise right here and then I'm going to align the camera so that you can see what it looks like. So there's the block. I'm going to lower the camera so that the camera is even with the block. Let's see if I can do that. Okay. There it is. The camera is now level with the block. There, I'll turn it that way so you can see it better. Put a piece of red paper behind here so you can see it better. This is a slide that is not bent. And you can see that that one's fairly straight. There may be a slight bend in it, but it's not too bad. Now I'm going to turn this around and look at this slide. You can see that there is a huge gap in here where you can see the red paper. Now if I turn this around the other direction, you can see that it teeters back and forth. And there is a big gap there, or if you teeter it the other way, a big gap there. So this slide is quite bent, and it may not look like a huge bend, but as far as trombone slides are concerned, it is a very large bend. Another way of telling if the slide is bent is you look up to a fluorescent light tube, you close one eye, and then you hold it like that. This is harder to do on a camera than it is in real life, so it probably won't show up as well on a camera as it would for me looking at it. You can see that there is a bend there. It goes off to the right quite a bit. Here's the other side tube. It's harder to see, but you can tell that the end is bent. Here's a piece of cork. It's 1 16th of an inch or 1.6 millimeters thick, and it fits in there very easily. 1 16th of an inch might not seem like a lot, but for trombones it is. Now I'm going to try to get this tube straightened out, and I'm going to use the cork for a reference because I have a whole bunch of thicknesses of cork, so I'll see how much cork it takes to fit under there. I'm going to try to get this straightened out, and then I'll see what size of cork fits underneath there. This is a very unusual repair, and it's not something you'd want to do on every trombone. I've probably only done this maybe three or four times in my career. This is the number 12 mandrel, and it's the largest mandrel that will fit inside of the side tube. So what I'm going to do is take this mandrel and put it in the vise. Normally I would chuck it in with the V-block, but that would damage this part. And if this gets damaged, it's going to also damage the inside of the next trombone slide that I work on. So I have lead jaws right here. What that's going to do is protect the slide so that I don't need to put it in all the way. I need to figure out where the high spot and the low spot is. I'm going to do that by turning this around and you can see this end going up and down as I spin it. So you can see that that's the low spot right there. And there, there's the high spot. Then I'll take this mandrel. This is the next smallest, number 11 mandrel. And I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to bend the mandrel down. And that should bend it right where the dent is. And the, where the dent is is also where the bend is in the side. Now one thing I need to be careful of is the other side. The other side could kink while I do this. It could squish together and make a dent on the other side. I'm going to try to make that not happen, but it may happen. Okay, so now I'm ready to bend this. What I need to do, if I just push down, since there are two mandrels in here, and they're steel, and then there's just a thin piece of brass, a thin circle of brass, holding up this entire thing here, it could easily bend too far and, and go all the way down. So the way I'm going to avoid that is I'm going to use a flexing motion. Flexing motion is where you, like, you push, and then you, you push and let up, and push and let up. You go up and down. So I'm going to do that but I'm also going to use some force. And when I push, I'm not just going to push. Think, think of it this way. 
you're on one side of the door pushing on the door trying to get the door open. Someone else is on the other side of the door pushing trying to keep the door shut. And you're pushing against each other and the door is not moving because you're pushing against each other. But if all of a sudden the person on the other side of the door moves out of the way, what's going to happen? That door is going to go flying open and you're going to go flying into that room. And that's the same way with this. If I just keep pushing on this till something happens, what's going to happen is it's going to bend. It's going to go way too far in the other direction and I will probably not be able to recover the slide from that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push down with my hand, but I'm also going to have some of the muscles in my arm pulling back too. So it's going to, I'm going to be pushing hard, but if something gives way, my hand is not going to move at all because, because I am pushing with force, but I'm also using the counter force with the other muscles in my arm. It's like if you're pushing against the door and someone moves out of the way, but you're ready for it, you're not going to go flying in, you're just going to stand there. The door is going to open, but you're not going to go flying into the room. And that's what's going to happen with this. I'm going to push down using the flexing motion, but I'm going to make sure that I do not go too far. And I'm going to put my other hand right where the dent is. If I feel anything happening on the bottom of the dent, I'm going to stop immediately. So, here I go. I'm pushing down using the flexing motion. I think I can feel it moving. I'm not sure. So what I'm going to do is pull the mandrel out and I'm going to turn it around again. Okay, it might be a little better. I can't tell for sure if it's any better than it was. It still is severely bent. So I'm going to try that again. Now I'm going to push again. Okay, I'm going to check it out again and see if it's any better than it was. Yeah, I think it's a little better. It looks like it's not moving nearly as much. I'm back to the granite block to see how it's going. The 1.6 millimeter or 1 16th inch cork does not fit in there at all now. Before it fit in there with a little room to spare. Let's try the uh, 3 30 seconds or 1.2 millimeter. That does not go in at all either. Now let's see, the 1 32nd or 0.8 millimeter. Uh, it almost fits but not quite. So it's smaller than 0.8 millimeters or 1 32nd of an inch. So that's good, it's getting better. Now I'm going to go back to the mandrel and try to straighten it out some more. So I'm going to do this again. And I will see if I can get it straighter. Okay, I'm being very careful, trying to feel for a bend, but without going too far. I really do not want to mess this up. Okay, I'm not sure if I moved it at all, but I'm going to check. Okay, let's see. No, it did not move at all, so I'm going to do it again. I'd rather have to do this a lot of times to get it to do what it's supposed to, instead of doing it once and then going too far and destroying it. So, I'm going to do this again. When you do a repair like this, or any other type of repair, where you need to put some force into something to get it to move, or anything like that, you always tend to want to go too far and then you end up making a mess out of it. So that's why I'm being very careful, trying to be very patient, because if this takes 50 times, that's okay. It won't really hurt anything if I don't go too far any of those times. But if, uh, oh, okay, I went a hair too far, which is okay because it's better than it was, it just went in the other direction, so I am going to bend it back now. Because if you do go way too far and destroy it, then it's all the way destroyed, so, and I don't want to do that. Okay, so it goes up to there, and I'll put that in there, and now I'm going the other direction, so I'm going to be even more careful this time 
because I don't know how it's going to bend the other direction. It may bend a lot easier or it may bend harder. I'm not really sure. So I'm just going to bend it a little bit and then see how it is. Okay, that looks like it's getting pretty close. Uh, it is actually teetering right on the dent now. Uh, but it's teetering from both directions on the dent. So if it if it's teetering on the dent this way, turn it around, it teeters on the dent the other way. What that tells me is that it's not round. I can also feel that there's a dent that's forming in there too. Let me show you. This is what I have now. I can see a tiny little bit of space in there. But this is the 1 64th inch cork or 0.4 millimeters. It does not go in there at all. So we're talking about maybe a 0.1 millimeter bend. You probably cannot see it in the video, but I can see it from where I am. I'm going to stop with this slide for right now, put that off to the side, and take out this slide, which is still severely bent. The inner side tube is going to be a little bit harder to use the block on, and the reason why is because there's a stepped portion where there's a larger diameter right there, than there is right here. The reason that they do that is so that the outer side only touches on this portion of the slide. Because if it touched on the whole portion, it would not work nearly as well because there'd be a larger surface area. But when you put this on the block, you have to account for that stepped portion. So it is going to be a little bit harder to use, but right now it is so bent that this portion really does not make any difference. Let's see what we have. This is the 1 16th or 1.6 millimeter cork and that easily fits in there with quite a bit of gap. So there's a lot of work to do on this one too. Now I'm going to go to the smaller number 9 mandrel which will fit the inner slide tube. In the inner slide tube there is a piece of tubing right here called the Venturi and it is smaller so I can only fit the number 2 mandrel into there. This number 2 mandrel is quite a bit smaller than the number 9 mandrel so it's not the best way of doing it. In theory I could remove the Venturi from the inner side tube but the chances of damaging it are very high so instead I'm just going to leave it and use the number 2 mandrel. So I'm going to line this up to where it goes, like that, and then I'm going to find the high spot, which is right there, and I'm going to do the same thing with this side as I did with the other one. I have to be a lot more careful now since the one mandrel is a lot smaller than the other mandrel. It may look like I'm not doing anything when I'm doing this, and that's because the motions are very small, and it does it would not take a lot to go too far. So I am being very careful when I do this. Now I'm going to try this on the block and see what we have. Okay, the 1.6 millimeter cork does not fit in there anymore. Let's see, the 1.2 barely fits, so. It's better than it was. It still needs a lot of work though. I just straightened this one more time and it looks like it is good. I'm turning it around and this part is not going up and down at all. And let's check it on here. Okay, there is a gap, but the gap is because of the stepped portion on the tubing. It looks like it's pretty even though all the way through. So I think that probably will do it on this one, at least for now. Here's what I'm working with. This is the outer slide, and the dent is right where my finger is. And you can see that there is a little bit of a dent, but it's hard to see in the video. It's more rippled now. I think what happened is when I bent it, since the metal stretched, when I bent it from the other direction, things are starting to get a little bit rippled and I can tell there's some tension on there. Now it's probably time to get out the mandrels and tap on this some more. But I think that's probably for a different video though. This is the inner slide tube and this is where the dent is on this one. 
and you can see the dent a little better on this one. Remember that this is a little bit larger diameter of tubing than right here. And not to use this as an excuse, but if this is off just a little bit and sticks out a little too far, it probably will not touch the inner slide and probably will not make a lot of difference. However, if this is still bent, the slide is going to go on a little bit crooked and then the inner slide tube is going to run into the outer slide tube and that will cause it to not work well. And I am curious how the slide works now. If you remember last week, I had to work really hard. Wow. I had to work really hard to get it to even go in. Well, look at that. Okay, it's not good, but it slides out without me touching it up to the point where the dent is. So I'll turn it around so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, well, so it does go out a little bit without me even touching it up into the point where the dent is and where the dent is there's a little bit of resistance but I get past the dent and it slides without too much problem so that is a lot better than I thought it was going to be there's still a lot of work to do the fact that it gets stuck where the stocking meets the dent tells me that I need to do a little bit more dent work at least on the outer slide tube that gives me hope that this trombone may be a success but there still is a lot of work to do, and I'm going to do that next week. Also, I'm going to try to make another tool that may help with the job, too. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos.